it's not by design that you have high integrity, that you have high ethical and moral standards, that you're honest and, you know, full of integrity, as we talked about. Not because you're designing it that way, but because you are doing the right thing and you're in service of your team. Welcome to the Weekly Leadership Experience, a place for leaders to get inspired, be challenged, and grow. I am your host, Rashad Oberlander. Let's get started. Today's episode of the Weekly Leadership Experience is brought to you by my 7-Day Leadership Growth Challenge. It's a free challenge that I've created, and it's delivered by email over the course of 7 days. I've created seven compelling questions to challenge various aspects of your leadership, the way you lead, and why you lead. Go to RashadOberlander.com and scroll down until you find the seven-day leadership challenge, or look for the link in the show notes. Hello, leaders, and welcome to this week's show. Thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you, and it is an honor to be speaking with you. Today, I want to talk about integrity. I want to talk about what integrity is, what it isn't, what we can mistake it to be, and just think about it a little bit in different terms. Um, Integrity is something that's really important to me. It's something that I prize and value in myself. I, uh, I like to say and believe that I am a person of high integrity, and it's, you know, it's something that I've always found to be important. And I'm not the only one. According to research out there, uh, honesty and integrity are among the most desired of leadership traits. When I think of integrity, some of the things that come to mind are doing the right thing even when no one is watching, sticking to your commitments, doing what you say you're going to do, and your words and your actions are in alignment. So you do what you say you're going to do. And so those, so those are some of the things that I think of and that I try to have in myself when I when I think of integrity and you know that's just how I try to 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 live. And so you know when you're not doing those things you could say that you're not having integrity. And you know I I think it's it's interesting to consider that um that's how we perceive integrity that's how we often think of of integrity. Someone of integrity is someone that we sort of esteem highly and they're, you know, doing the right thing and they're, you know, doing what they say they're going to do and they're upholding their commitments and they do the right thing even when no one's watching. And and those are some of the things that we think of of someone that is having high integrity. So integrity is very much, you know, a very, very positive thing to have. And, you know, some reading I have done in the last while uh, it challenges that perception a little bit. Um, I think integrity still is something to be desired and something to pursue. Um, but I think it's worth considering um, the kind of whole picture. And let's look at some definitions and let's look at some um, expanded view of of integrity. Um, you know, first of all, we can definitely agree with hypocrisy as is something that when someone says one thing and does another we can say that's hypocritical, right? That's someone is behaving hypocritically to what they have said. They're doing something else, right? So hypocrisy is that sort of idea of saying one thing and doing another. And we can say that someone who is consistently hypocritical probably doesn't have integrity. Um, But integrity is actually built on a little bit more than just doing the right thing, et cetera, et cetera. When we look at integrity and and some of the study I've done is that integrity is actually a combination and morality. Ethics is the defined standard of right and wrong or of good and evil. And, you know, this is why we have ethics boards for various professional uh, organizations or there's a code of ethics at a company or there's, you know, ethical standards and, and things in place to, to kind of govern the right and the wrong and the good and the evil. 
out there, right? And and you know, certainly professional organizations or professionals in the in in many different uh, areas, such as lawyers, doctors, accountants, have ethical standards that they are expected to uphold. And if they don't uphold those standards, their pr- ability to practice can be taken away from them. Then we have morality. Morality is the lived standard of right and wrong or good and evil, which is what you actually do. So your ethics is what you sort of, quote unquote, what you say you're going to do. And then morality then is what you actually do. Integrity speaks of soundness, completeness, and integrity, and which is the extent that a person's ethics and morality A person's what they say they are going to do and a person's what they are actually doing are integrated. So that person has integrity. To the extent that a person's ethics and morality are integrated, that person has integrity. Then we can also say to the extent that a person's ethics and morality are not integrated, that person lacks integrity. So there's an important distinction here. So I'll repeat this phrase. To the extent that a person's ethics and morality are integrated, then that person has integrity. To the extent that a person's ethics and morality are not integrated, that person lacks integrity. Which is... A very important distinction, and it's interesting to think about because we just think of integrity so much as it's such a positive thing. And we don't consider the fact that a person can still have integrity when their ethical and moral standards are low. Remember, integrity is being consistent with doing what you say you're going to do is one of the things that we say about integrity, right? So you can be Mr. Smith who can say that he is going to tell you that he will lie, cheat, and steal from you, or he's going to lie, cheat, and steal from someone, and he actually does it. He has low ethics, and he has low morality because he actually does those things, but the morality and the ethics are in alignment So he's behaving congruently with what he says he's going to do. So his integrity is intact. Which is somewhat bizarre to think about because he's doing the wrong, like what we see is the wrong thing. It's it's not okay to lie, cheat, and steal. Like those are commonly held distinctions of right and wrong, right? It's wrong to lie, cheat, and steal. Yes? Okay, great. But he says he's going to do it. He does it. His integrity is is intact. So, you know, the ethical and moral standard is quite low, but he still has a high level of integrity because he's behaved congruently with what he said. A little bit of a bizarre way of thinking about it, but it's if you stop for a moment, it's true. Right? So we can also say then that... If Mr. Smith was to claim that he's going to lie, cheat, and steal, but then doesn't, he's moral in practice, but he lacks integrity because of what he said he's going to do and what he does isn't in alignment. So he's said one thing and he's done something else. So therefore, he lacks integrity. Again, kind of different to think about that way, but... You know, it is it is true when you stop to think of the definition of these things. So, being moral in practice, but living to a different standard than what you've said you're going to live is also lacking in integrity. So you can have high or low ethics and still be moral or immoral. Therefore, if you want integrity, you must choose your ethic and live to match it. And the reason that this becomes important is because 
you, you know, it's, it's how you're living, number one, but it's also important to your team. <clears throat> your team needs to know who they're dealing with. They will m- imitate you, so how your integrity and morality and ethic kind of combined will influence the culture within your team, So that, and then they will imitate what they see. No one appreciates hypocrisy, so of course no one is going to appreciate if you espouse certain ethics and then live in a completely different fashion. And what you say and do has a big impact on your team. They are watching and observing everything that you say and do. It's worth mentioning that the combination of your ethics, morality, and integrity, it shouldn't really change whether people are watching or not. That's kind of part of the point of integrity is that it doesn't change, right, whether you're being observed or not. But it is important, and I think it's worth considering what what your level of ethic and morality and integrity is, right? It's also important, I think, to note that, you know, when you're actually in pursuit of your higher calling and you're serving people through your leadership, that these qualities will often naturally develop, right? If you're if you're putting other people's interests ahead of your own, if you're wanting people to grow and develop, if you want the best for them, and if you are you know, kind of pursuing those things, like you would sort of naturally develop those qualities, right? Because you're not going to, you know, have a low ethical standard when it comes to people and doing the right thing and then live a different way if you truly want to help other people, if you truly want to lead and develop your team, if you truly want the best for them, you know, your ethical standard, your moral standard, your integrity will will become will come and come in, in alignment. You become honest not because you're trying to be honest. You have integrity not because you're trying to have integrity. You have high ethical and moral standards beca- because it's the right thing to do, because it's what you're doing in pursuit of elevating your team. Right? It's not by design that you have high integrity, that you have high ethical and moral standards, that you're honest and, you know, full of integrity, as we talked about, not because you're designing it that way, but because you are doing the right thing and you're in service of your team. Now, all of this doesn't mean that you will be or have to be perfect. You won't. You will blow it sometimes. Like, we we are never... 100% in alignment with everything that we say. And sometimes the things that we do are in contrast to that. For various reasons, which is a subject for an entirely different podcast, but you will blow it sometimes. And that's part of the human condition. But you do need to check in with yourself. It's worth considering what your ethics are, right? What are the things that you be- that you are espousing or believe about right and wrong and good and evil? What is your moral standard? How are you behaving in relation to your espoused ethical standards? Are you behaving congruently with them or are you not? Do you say that honesty is important to you and then lie? Do you say that something as simple as being on time is important to you and then you're always late? These are simple things, but sometimes we deviate from the path that we believe we're on, and it's worth checking in and figuring out where we are on that path. And are our words and actions in alignment? Are our ethics and morality coming into alignment? And if they're not, integrity is lacking, right? If they are in alignment, then integrity is in place. But you need to check in, you know, and when you do screw up, you own it. You, 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 you own it. You seek forgiveness if you need to. You deal with it, and you recenter. You come back to that that center, that ethical standard. Realign your wor- your actions with your words, and come back to it. So, integrity is a, a, a hugely important quality. It's something that people desire in their leaders. Um, But having integrity is not the end of the story, because as we've talked about today, uh, 
you can have low ethical standard combined with low morality and still be a person of integrity. So it's important to consider what your ethical standards are, how you're behaving in relation to those standards, and if they're not in alignment, figuring out why and what you need to do to, to center them, to come back to what you say combined with what you do equaling integrity or not, and then owning it. So just a little bit of a different twist on integrity, something to challenge your thinking, maybe to revisit your, your standards for yourself and what you believe and what you say and do. I'd love to know what you thought about integrity in today's podcast and what your thoughts are. So hit me up on social media, tag me or send me an email, Rashad at RashadOberlander.com. I look forward to speaking with you again next week. In the meantime, stay awesome. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, would you head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe, leave me a rating, leave me a review and share this with a friend. It spreads the word and helps the podcast grow. You can also find me on social media at re Oberlander. Until next time, stay awesome.